So last sitting is August 2022. Last question. Oh. So the ZK Insurance Company Limited was incorporated in the year 2019. The company deals with different classes of insurance. The following trial balance was extracted from the books of account as of 31st December. So property, plant, and equipment, provision for depreciation, investment in government securities, gross premiums received from direct clients, Motor vehicle fire, gross premiums received from agents, motor vehicle fire, commission on reinsurance accepted, motor vehicle fire, commission on reinsurance seeded, um, motor vehicle fire, sundry receivables, bank balance, director's fee, reinsurance premium paid for motor vehicle and fire. An earned premium as at January. For motor vehicle fire, claims outstanding as of January 2021. For motor vehicle fire claims paid. Legal cost to on claims. Um, Motor vehicle is 285 is 130. Sundry expenses on motor vehicle claims. Provision for bad and doubtful debts. Motor vehicle fire management expenses for motor vehicle fire investment income. Premiums returned. Motor vehicle fire. Profit and loss account. Additional information note one. Claims intimated and outstanding as of that first January, sorry, that first December 2021, amounted to 750 for motor vehicle, insurance and 480 for fire. An earned premium is maintained at 80%. And 50% of the net premiums received for motor vehicle and fire insurance, respectively. Three investment allowances have been agreed with the commissioner at 1,200,000 for the year ended. Investment income analysis, interest received. From government securities, interest received from local banks, dividend received from a Gendan company, dividend received from a local company fee paid to investment managers amounted to 750 for the year ended. Uh, required taxable income or loss for Ezekiel Insurance Company Limited for the year and compute the tax payable. So we have to prepare a statement of taxable income.
So we have gross premiums received from the trial balance. Motor vehicle is three million, five is two point five. So we just add them. So gross premiums received. Uh, then the same gross premiums received from agents will just add. So let's say we have gross premiums received. So gross premiums received for motor vehicle is two million. For fire is uh, one point two. So gross premium will be three point two million. That's three point two. But then they still receive from agent, right? Okay, so means. Uh, gross premium so gross premium received from agents again sorry uh, so, so from agents near 2 million and 1.2 for majors, eh? India, two million, the one point two. That's from agents. This is the three point two. India from agents, but kuna gross premium received from direct clients. Eh? Direct clients, the three million. So that's five point five. Then we get adjustments for premiums, uh, commission on <coughs> insurance. These down there we have reinsurance premiums. P. Before even the reinsurance premium, there's an under premium for motor vehicle and, and there's a note too on an and premium. We said an and premium is maintained at 80% and 50% of the net premiums received for motor vehicle and fire insurance. So you don't need to use the 80 and 50. That's just to show because we've been given the figure. Right? So motor vehicle 4.8. Uh, should be eighty percent of an earned premium. Eh? Those figures are eighty percent of an earned premium for motor vehicle and for fire it's fifty percent. Anyway, so this total, we add this, we get eight point seven. So from eight point seven, let's first we deduct reinsurance premium. Eh? So reinsurance premium. Uh, before an and uh, I want to let an and premium. Eh? So an and premium in January, could an and premium in December. To, in additional information, apart from the 80% and 50%, there's nothing like an and premium in December. Could an and premium, but only in January. So that one will be deducted. So an and premium in January. So we need to say less an earned premium. On first of January. So an earned premium on first of January is going to be for motor vehicle is 4.8 plus fire and happy 2.5. The total of that is upon happy. Drop down. 
and hand premium is 4.8 plus 2.5. The total of that is 7.3. We will draw up as 7.3 is an hand in general. Kamani and and by the end of the year you add. Kamani and and at the beginning of the year you subtract. <clears throat> Which point two? An hand premium is maintained at eighty percent of the net net premiums received. So the net premiums received are this. So the exam is simply giving you information that how we got 4.8 and 2.5 for the general insurance, it should be it should be 80% of it should be 80% of total premiums of general insurance. And for this one, it should be 50%. That's just information because the figures have been given to us. So you are not meant to calculate. As Emma, what you are seeing as an earn is 50% of, is 80% of premiums you see for general business and 50% of, for motor vehicle, 50% of fire. So that's just information. So to mentor an earned premium, uh, we also have to look for reinsurance premium. <coughs> The insurance premium comma equal, we also need that. The insurance premium paid to me, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before and under premiums in general. Yes, we have to lessen here also the insurance premium paid. Mm -hmm. Less than the insurance. Premium. P. And the insurance premium P for motor vehicle is 400. And for fire is 150. So that's 550. So that's the insurance premium P. And earned premium in generally legal cost. Kuna premiums returned. Check down there. After investment income, there are premiums returned. So we also lessen premium return. So premium return for motor vehicle is 800. For five is 700, so return 1,500. Premium return. <coughs> so, what does this give us? Negative what? Six hundred is negative, yeah. So six hundred is negative or positive? Negative. Okay. Then six fifteen. Six fifty. That's premiums. Then we are going to look for other incomes. Eh? Other incomes include commission on reinsurance exceeded. Umesema? 600. It's 700. It's 650. Eh? Then we have uh, we have commission on reinsurance. See there. So bring here commission on reinsurance. Needed. 
So commission on reinsurance is that Commission on reinsurance seeded is motor vehicle is 700. Class 5 is 300. This commission is. That's commission on reinsurance seeded. Then. Could the investment income down there to the investment income of 41, 155 out there? Could the investment income, that investment income, the breakdown is given. Look at note four. Note four says investment income analysis. Could the interest received from government securities, which you have to convert to gross? Could the interest received from local banks, which also we have to convert to gross, dividends received from a Ugandan company, that one will not be included. Dividends received from a local company also will not be included. Ebu Adizo, when it comes in a party of 4 million 15500, so that we know that that amount is exhausted in the breakdown before we can include it here. Good. So we'll only include the two, uh, the two interests, eh? but we have to change them to cross. So investment income. Could I include these two interests? The first interest in their government securities. Would I include 2040 divide by? 85 because 15 percent in the allowance. So, you know, so in the net, you know, multiply by 100. So, your government security is across the corner. So, gross in 2400. 2400 is gross. Then, change your engineer peer gross from local banks. Eh? Is 760.5, but then divide by 85, multiply by 100 from months. Is 94.7? Uh, one. One. So, add this one up at that. Add this, you get? Yes. 33. Thirty-two, eh? Thirty-two ninety-four. Thirty-two ninety-four point seven one. But can you lesson the fees? Look at note five. Fees paid to investment managers amounted to seven fifty. So you say less fees paid to investment managers. So fees paid to investment managers is seven fifty. Total less than seven fifty upper. The difference we add to income. So, in Ngabi, 
Hmm? 20? 20? 2544. Union investment income. Do you have any other income? Pale you quarter balance when I get one item sundry receivables, but that has not been received. You will tax it when it's received, it's just a receivable. So I'm looking for any other income to turn a commission on reinsurance and see the detail. Commission on reinsurance. Commission on reinsurance seeded is already there. Mm. I think we are, that's it. As far as income items are concerned, investment allowances, and so this will be income. Then you lessen a lot of expenses. Less than allowable expenses. Allowable expenses to transfer the claims. So let's start with claims paid. And claims paid for motor vehicle is 27, 70 plus, for fire is 21, 10. So that gives us a total paid of how much? So claims paid will be a total of uh, 4880, yeah? 4880 is claims paid. Then look at note one. Claims in intimated and outstanding as of December amounted to 750 for motor vehicles and that for fire insurance, that's in December. So we have claims intimated. And outstanding. We'll just say claims outstanding. Claims outstanding on 31st December. So claims, so those are accrued claims, right? Eh? Claims outstanding to add uh, 750 for motor vehicles plus 480 is a total of 1230. So to add 1230 upper. You get 7110 claims. Then uh, reinsurance claims, eh? What they do? Reinsurance claims, so that is paid. We want to see whether there's any, uh, like, uh, which one? So this is 61. We want to check whether there's anything received on from reinsurance. Clean commission. That is paid. And premium claims outstanding. Oh, we have claims outstanding in general. Sorry. So there's even claims outstanding in general. We we'll have started with this. Eh? There's claims outstanding in general. So we'll say drop down. Claims outstanding in general for fire is 1100. Plus, for motor vehicle is 1100. For fire is 840. So total outstanding me 1940 in January. That you subtract. Then you have claims outstanding in December. Cut it down. So claims outstanding in December, the ones we just had a few minutes ago. Here it was. Hmm? 750 plus 480. 
750 plus 480, which you got in, in Africa? 12 so you expensive claims in a Bongapi. I wanna I wanna reinsurance recoveries. Otherwise, would have, would have subtracted the insurance coverage. You claim the same number that. Which one? That's our expense for claims. Then you bring in other expenses. Kuna pale ju, kuna commission on reinsurance accepted. So bring in commission on the insurance. Accepted. Commission on the insurance accepted for the vehicle in your seat. For five is 200. That's 800. Kuna director's fees. Director's fees is allowable as an expense for ninety five. Kuna legal cost on claims. Legal costs on claims for the vehicle in 280, fine in 130, total in 410. Legal costs on claims, sundry expenses on motor vehicle claims. On motor vehicle claims, sundry expenses on motor vehicle claims is two twenty. Provision for bad and doubtful debts will not be allowed because that's a general provision. It has to be specific. Then you have management expenses. So management expenses, motor vehicle is for 50, plus 380 for fire. That gives us management expenses of uh, 830. Mm -hmm. Note one, note two. We also have investment allowances, note three, have been agreed at 1.2 million, so we don't need to calculate so investment allowances. Have been agreed. Investment allowances have been agreed at 1.2. So that's it. So it's not as intimidating as it may look, but you see, if it catches you at the end, in an exam, yeah, you can really get all of your thoughts. So you can't even breathe. Yeah. But when you begin doing it, huh? yes, yes, yes. Uh, if once you get the hang of it, I think you you can finish it in record time. But just by reading, it might look very complicated <laughs> and intimidating, you know?
Then the question is very long. There are a lot of information. The number of the question is sometimes. <laughs> is it always like that? Mm. So their idea is to intimidate. Mm. This one would be 28, Actually, you end up with a horse. They are saying compute the tax pair with, if any, of course, there will be no completion tax. Completion tax pair. NIL. So the company is a loss. Look at one last question and then we can keep another topic. So this question must be November, November 20. November 2020, then about. It's Benita. Benita Contractors is November 2019, question four. Benita is November 2019, question four. November 2019, question four.
November 2019, question four. Question four A, one stop border post, eh? OSBPS, are a reason for border trade initiative, which has significantly changed the way neighboring countries conduct business with each other. We quite explain the meaning of OSBPS. Summarize four benefits of OSBPS. Then describe four functions of a tax agent. Ah, I'm looking at the wrong question. CUU, sorry. CUU, CUU insurance, EOD contract. Let me get the right question. So, but it's the same situation. Okay? November 2019. Must be there. Yeah, it's the same sitting as question three, so it's question three, not question four. Uh, question three, my shaman, yes. Question three C, November 2019, question three C. My shaman insurance company limited provided the following information for the year ended 31st December 2018. So gross premium received. Clean pay, commission ceded, commission accepted, claims recovered on reinsurance, foreign exchange gains realized, dividends from life assurance fund, rental income from commercial building budgets provision, investment income reserved for an expired list of January, legal expenses relating to claims, agency fees, management fees, repairs on rental properties, entertainment expenses, purchase of furniture, purchase of computer, insurance premium P, return premium, additional information, reserves for an expired risk on 31st December were 200,000. Claims outstanding in January and December were 600,000 and 900,000 respectively. The premiums outstanding in January and December were six million and twelve million respectively. Agency fees included two hundred thousand relating to the life assurance business. Legal fees included one hundred thousand relating to settlement of a tax dispute. Investment income comprised interest from bank, interest from treasury bonds required taxable profit or loss of my Shamema Insurance Company Limited and tax debt. Uh, so prepare a statement.
So, what are our incomes? We have gross premium receipt. So, gross premiums received is thirteen million. Then, on three, your premiums of standing in general year the same. So, we have outstanding premiums. On first of January. So outstanding premiums on first of January brought down from the seven and six cents. Then you have outstanding premiums. And that's the first of the summer. So that would be thirty three. Then we'll make adjustments for yes, for twelve hundred. Well, I'm reading. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. This one is six million, not six hundred. This one is six million. And this one is twelve million. So that's not six million. So that's premiums, but we still have to adjust for return premium. Uh, so look for return premium. So down at the bottom, there's return premium of 5,000 and then there's reinsurance premium paid off. So we bring still less, reinsurance premium. Four thousand. Then there is also return premium. That leads us to insertion. So that is income from premiums. Then there is commission seeded. Commission seeded is 800. Commission seeded. Foreign exchange gains realized. Foreign exchange gains realized is, is uh, three five hundred. Dividends from life assurance fund, you cannot tax that, or you cannot include that. Life business is treated separately. Rental income from commercial building uh, will we'll keep that pending until we have expenses from rent, eh? uh, so that we can net off uh, from rent. Bad debts is a provision. You want a specific? 
provision, so that's not allowable. We have investment income. Again, investment income, there's a breakdown in note six. Eh? So investment income comprised interest from bank is that we have to change to gross, then we add to interest from bonds. Eh? So we have investment income. So investment income, we will change uh, 850 to gross, we'll get a million. So it's 850 over 85 times, 100 will give us a million. Then we add to, from treasury bonds is 350. So we add 350, so 1350. So that's investment income. There's a reserve for an expired risk in general, it's a thousand. And then in note one, reserve for an expired risk in December is 200. So the net is income. So add here reserve for an expired risk. Reserve for an expired risk in general is a thousand minus the expense, the net is income. Legal expenses related to training, agency expenses, management expenses. There's repairs of rented property. At least you can charge that against rental income. So there's rental income. So rental income is going to be 1,600 less than repairs to rental property of 200. So it will be less than 1,400. Entertainment expenses, purchase of furniture, purchase of computers, insurance premium, paid return premium, claims. I think these are the incomes. Then we lessen allowed expenses. So less than allowed expenses. So the first expense we want to bring in is claims. Claims paid for that matter. So claim paid is four million. Claims paid is four million. Then note number two gives us claims outstanding in. So claims outstanding. On first of January, claims are standing on first of January is six hundred. Any of claims are standing. On thirty first of December. So that gives us four three hundred. Then we have what was recovered on the insurance. This claim recovered on the insurance of three thousand. So claim recovered on the insurance. Claims recovered on reinsurance is that. So that's the expense of claims. Then we pick the other expenses like uh, uh, commission accepted. Commission accepted is 20. Legal expenses related to claims. Okay. 
legal expenses related to claims as an adjustment to a file, 100,000 relating to settlement of a tax dispute. So legal expenses related to claims is 400, less 100. Then you have agency fees. Agency fees is 400 less 200 relating to life. Because 100, Angalia not 5. Legal fees include 100 relating to settlement of a tax dispute. Tax disputes are not allowed expenses. Then you have management fees. Management fees is with 20. Then you have entertainment expenses. Entertainment expenses is 400. <clears throat> then you get investment allowances. So we have patches of furniture. So furniture is 600 times 10 percent to 60. Then you have computer. Computer is 300. We multiply by 25 percent. That's 75. So that's it. You'll be able to get income less allowable expenses. This is thirty two, three seventy five. Thirty two, three seventy five is the income. Thirty two, three seventy five is the profit. If they want tax payable, so tax payable will be corporation tax.
So get corporation tax liability. As we go to the tax to a two incomes, then investment income, we had uh, interest for bank.
So that is insurance. Uh, we want to introduce the next topic, which is uh, it's called property developers and contractors. This is simply a taxation of long term contracts. Property developers and contractors. Then you say a contract is an arrangement. A contract is an arrangement. A contract is an arrangement specifically negotiated. A contract is an arrangement specifically negotiated for the construction of an asset. A contract is an arrangement specifically negotiated for the construction of an asset or combination of assets. For the construction of an asset or combination of assets. For the construction of an asset or combination of assets that are closely interrelated, that are closely interrelated, that are closely Sorry, integrated, sorry, integrated, that are closely integrated, that are closely integrated or interdependent, that are closely integrated or interdependent, that are closely integrated or interdependent in terms of their design, in terms of their design, in terms of their design, technology and function, in terms of their design, technology, and function. In terms of their design, technology, and function. Or their ultimate purpose. Or their ultimate purpose. Or their ultimate purpose or use. Or their ultimate purpose or use. Next point, you say a contract may be negotiated for a construction, a contract may be negotiated for a construction, a contract may be negotiated for a construction of a single asset, of a single asset such as a bridge, for the construction of a single asset such as a bridge, building, a bridge building, pipeline or road, Pipeline of road, pipeline of road. It may also deal with the construction of a number of assets. It may also deal with the construction of a number of assets. It may also deal with the construction of a number of assets that are closely interrelated. It may also deal with the construction of a number of assets that are closely interrelated, that are closely interrelated or interdependent, 
or interdependent or interdependent in terms of their design, in terms of their design, in terms of their design, technology and function, in terms of their design, technology and function, in terms of their design, technology and function, or their ultimate purpose, or their ultimate purpose, or their ultimate purpose, e.g. construction of an oil refinery, e.g. construction of an oil refinery, e.g. construction of an oil refinery, and other complex pieces of equipment, construction of an oil refinery, and other complex pieces of equipment, Next, are bedding contract revenue, contract revenue, contract revenue. Then you see, revenue is measured at the fair market value. Revenue is measured at the fair market value. Revenue is measured at the fair market value of the consideration. Revenue is measured at the fair market value of the consideration of the consideration received or receivable of the consideration received or receivable. Then you say measurement of contract revenue is influenced. Measurement of contract revenue is influenced. Measurement of contract revenue is influenced by various uncertainties, measurement of contract revenue is influenced by various uncertainties, by various uncertainties, which depend on the outcome. <coughs> depend on the outcome of future events. Which depend on the outcome of future events. We depend on the outcome of future events. Next point, the estimates may need to be revised. The estimates may need to be revised as events occur. The estimates may need to be revised as events occur. The estimates may need to be revised as events occur. And uncertainties are involved and uncertainties are resolved and uncertainties are resolved and uncertainties are resolved next are bedding contract cost contract cost contract cost then you see the contract cost can be categorized as follows the contract cost can be categorized as follows. The contract cost can be categorized as follows. The contract cost can be categorized as follows. A. The costs, the costs that are related directly, the costs that are related directly to a specific contract, the costs that are related directly to a specific contract, the costs that are related directly to a specific contract, B, the costs that are attributable to a contract activity in general, the costs that are attributable, attributable. yes, the costs that are attributable to a contract activity in general, the costs that are attributable to a contract activity in general and can be allocated to a contract and can be allocated to a contract or to the contract, can be allocated to the contract, and see 
such other costs such other costs such other costs as are specifically chargeable to a customer such other costs as are specifically chargeable to a customer under the terms of a contract 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 next are bedding revenue and expense recognition revenue and expense recognition revenue and expense recognition revenue and expense recognition you see where the outcome of a contract can be estimated where the outcome of a contract can be estimated reliably where the outcome of a contract can be estimated reliably where the outcome of a contract can be estimated reliably the contract revenue and costs are recognized the contract revenue and cost are recognized. The contract revenue and cost are recognized. The contract revenue and cost are recognized by reference to the stage of completion. The contract cost and revenue are recognized by reference to the stage of completion. By reference to the stage of completion of the contract activity by reference to the stage of completion of contract activity, by reference to the stage of completion of the contract activity. This approach is referred to as the percentage of completion. This approach is referred to as the percentage of completion method. This approach is referred to as the percentage of completion method. Next point, the stage of completion of a contract activity, the stage of completion of a contract activity can be determined by a formula. The stage of completion of a contract activity can be determined by a formula, can be determined by a formula, i.e., so we'll have a number of formulas. A, you can have, this is the most common, cost to date, so cost to date, you divide by estimated cost, estimated cost of completion, or you can have units completion. Units completed today if you divide by estimated. Estimated total units to be used to be produced. Yeah? Estimated total units to produce ten hundred or C value of work satisfied. Divide by contract price, multiply by the
The next we look at determination of estimated contract profit or loss. Determination. When you say the estimated profit of a contract, the estimated profit of a contract, the estimated profit of a contract can be determined. <coughs> the estimated profit of a contract can be determined as follows. Estimated profit of a contract can be determined as follows. So we start by getting the contract price. Give it a last time. Cost to be certified. Percentage of completion is what you have calculated earlier using any of these approaches A, B, or C. Using any of these approaches to get percentage of completion, and you can be able to estimate profit. So when you can say profit, recognize. Profit is recognized a core XX that profit multiplied by percentage of completion. As the pioneer. The pay mission in May 2012. We put on May 2012. Only in Africa 2013. How many in Africa? 2013 December. We have to send you May 2012. In May 2012, they show you. They 
Shantuni ujenzi. From what I've sent you, you may turn it off so you can share to everybody else.
So the question reads, the GNT contractors, it's a farm, it's just to GNT contractors. <laughs> So Gen Z contractors is a farm engaged in the property development business. During the year ended the 1st December 2011, the farm secured three construction contracts, namely X, Y, and Z. The farm completes taxable income from the contracts on the basis of the percentage of completion method. Now the information relating to the contracts is as follows. Contract price, cost of work certified to date, estimated cost of completion. Now, additional information, the total allowed, the total allowed expenses for the three contracts amount to 500,000. So the farm allocates expenses on the basis of contract price. The farm received interest income on a housing development bond amounting to 60,000. During the year, the farm also received dividends from investments amounting to 1360,000 loss. Determine the following for the year, taxable profit loss for each contract, uh, total taxable profit loss for a farm, and tax liability if any for a farm. So let's start by looking at contract X. So contract X. So just from the format we we had looked at earlier, so you get the contract price. For contract X, the contract price is 1.2 million. Then in lesson, cost to date, cost of work certified to date. Cost of work certified. And the cost of work certified for this contract is 400. Then you get estimated cost to complete. Estimated cost to complete for this contract is complete. Then we have allowable expenses. Allowable expenses is in note one. They're saying total allowable expenses for the three contracts, the total, right, is 500,000. This farm allocates expenses on the basis of the contract price. <coughs> on the basis of the contract price. Right? So you can do an apportionment. This is a lot of expenses. So the contract price for X is 1.2. You divide by the total contract price as a proportion. So 1.2 plus 1.8 is 3 million plus 2 million is 5 million. Out of 5 million times the allowed expenses. And that will give you a treat. So you also have a lot of expenses. Oh, 
friends. So what we have here is what we call contract profit. Of two foot. And then you have to get the profit to recognize based on percentage of completion method. So profit recognized. So we get profit recognized. Based on percentage of completion method for this contract, yes, you add everything the contract price x is 1.2 plus 1.8 plus 2 million. The profit recognized cost of work done for x is 400, estimated cost to complete will be 840. By the time the contract is completed, then I multiply it by 240. Either you can get the percentage first by multiplying by 100, or you can get the profit right away as a proportion. So 400 by the time the contract is complete, the total cost will be 840. Then you multiply by 240. So profit to recognize for this one will be 141. So I want you to do the same thing for contract Y and contract Z. This will be for contract Y. Can we get the same figures for contract Y? We get for contract Y, then we get for Z. You can now complete and that will have sorted the A part. Hmm? Which one? I didn't get that. For why? This is 141, 114.
So, for why the contract price is eighteen hundred? Cost to be it is seven twenty. Estimated cost to complete is five sixty. That's twelve eighty. The allowable expenses is one eighty. So that one gives you income of how much? Huh? 340. This is 340. So 340, you work out the profit with covenants. So it will be 720. Get one and one. 
And for that, it's two reasons. Uh, cost of this is like two. So that's A. So we'll 